Hello, good afternoon. Welcome along to this Making Maths visual session where we're going to talk about Equatio. Um, I have assembled the Avengers. We were talking Disney just before we started. Um, I have assembled the Equatio Avengers today um, to join me on this um, webinar. Just want to say appreciate anyone taking the time to come along today. Strange times here in the UK at the moment. So just super grateful if anyone's taking the time to join us. And it's totally okay to catch you up on the recording if now is not the right time for you as well. Um, so we've got Ryan with us today. Ryan, do you want to say a quick hello? Yep. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Ryan Graham. I'm the Chief Technical Officer here at Textop. Um, I'm the person in charge of the development of all of our, our products here at Textop and also the, the accessibility of those products as well. So very excited to talk about uh, Equatio again today. It's, it's been a long time for me and I'm really looking forward to it. Very important job, very senior member of staff. So I'm very, I'm got to be on my best behaviour today because normally I say something that's really embarrassing. So we'll just, we'll just ride with it when it happens because it's going to happen. <laughs> Next, we've got Louis, equally in awe of Louis. Louis, do you want to say a quick hello? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name is Louis Shanafelt. I'm the product manager for Equatio here at Text Help. And once upon a time, Brian and I used to work almost every day together to to bring you Equatio and. And to, you know, it, do all those updates and all those product features, whether it be accessibility or just things that will help you in the classroom. Um, Ryan, has, as he said, has moved on to the chief technical officer. So I work with some other developers now on the product and, um, you know, used to talk to Sammy way back in the day before she was a text helper to kind of find out what you all needed uh, in the UK for your for your maths class. So uh, really excited to be here again and to do this with Ryan. We haven't done it in a long time. So thanks to Sammy and Ryan, of course, for their time. And uh, we look forward to showing you some of the newer features for Equatio today and kind of tell you what we've been up to this summer. So Amazing. Thank you, Louis. Uh, so I'm here just running the buttons today. My name's Sammy. I do work at Textile now. I didn't used to. And we'll come on to that in a bit. Uh, I'm teaching and learning specialist for um UK and EMEA, which is Europe, Middle East, Asia, that sort of region, and the UK as well. Um, so if you've got any questions, we've put our Twitter handles on there, and I've also put my email on there as well. So if you do have any questions as we go along today, feel free to pop them in the chat, but also you can reach out to us afterwards if you're watching the recording. It's a genuine open invitation to get in touch as well. So who are we? Very quickly, we are Text Help. Um, Maybe you've not heard of us, maybe you have, maybe you've heard of some of our products, maybe you've heard of some of our companies that have come into the family. Um, we are a huge family, all under the one text help umbrella now, um, which includes Claro, Lexable, Lingit, WizKids, and Don Johnston as well. So we are ever growing and ever expanding. So maybe we've encountered you in another way, and it's really nice to be connected with you today as part of the text help family. We offer loads of great solutions out there. Um, the one that I think people recognize most of all is that purple jigsaw piece, which is read and write. And that's our literacy support tool, seeing additional challenges around literacy and text based um, working. And so read and write has tons and tons of features to help get students where they need to be and give them that support. I would say equally important would be equation. I'm sure these two would agree with me. <laughs> Equatio um, is the go-to maths tool for making maths accessible, number one, that's what we do, but also making it engaging, visual, fun, and bringing maths alive as well. And we do also offer science support as well. Orbit Note is our PDF tool. There is nothing more frustrating as a teacher to find a great PDF for students to complete and then they can't complete it. Uh, Orbit Note gives you an opportunity to, first of all, make that PDF accessible, but then editable, customizable, and it's got a real nice seamless workflow with Google Classroom as well. Fluency Tutor is our reading assessment tool for tracking that reading progress as we go through. But there's so much more to Textile, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about Equatio because here at Textile, we want to help everyone understand and be understood. It's so good. It's on my back on this T-shirt as well, which I didn't realize until I went to the shop earlier. And someone asked, what's that on your back? <laughs> because of the front is all right. Um, but this is what we want to do. We're on a mission and we're on a mission to help people understand. And I think understanding as a teacher makes me nervous because I'm thinking, how do I measure that? But actually, there's so much more to it, to being able to understand and to be understood and to have your voice heard and um, thinking about like UDL principles and that multiple means of expression that's really what we do here at text help thinking about equatio then what we want to do is we want to help students be able to read maths anywhere 
that's the first basic bit about making maths accessible and helping people understand and be understood with maths. And when we think about reading maths anywhere, um, we have the Equatio toolbar that sits at the bottom and a screenshot reader. And it will grab maths anywhere on any web page. And you'll see not only is it bringing it aloud out of the page, reading it aloud, it's also drawing your attention and focus to it as well. But if attention and focus is your challenge with learning, the discoverability tool quickly turned on at the bottom puts that blue box around where that maths is on the page and helps you notice where to focus and where to bring your maths thinking in. So that's the very beginning of Equatio, very simply using that screenshot reader tool. But we want to go beyond that. Like I say, we're on a mission to help everyone um, understand and be understood. So it would be pretty rubbish if we stopped there. So we go beyond that as well. So um, I'm going to pop a traditional question up here. Just going to pause while I take a quick drink. It's also strategically placed so that like it fills the gap of why you're reading that question. But I think as a maths teacher, I think one of the biggest frustrations is the decoding of the question before you get to the maths. You could be absolutely brilliant at maths. But the decoding that's required to understand this question might be what limits you. You might not be able to extract the maths from that. You might not be able to visualize that. So as a teacher, my job would be to help you understand that maths. And so automatically I can make it better because I can visualize it. I can bring it alive. I think it's a bit of a no brainer. You know, which would you prefer that one? Oh, that one, which is better, like in an eye test, it's going to be this one. You can see the maths automatically. I've made it more accessible to you because you can think, right, I can see what the problem is now. This was built using Math Space, which I'll mention briefly, and maybe the guys will mention something about it as we go through. Beauty of today is there's lots of surprises for me because I don't know what's coming up. Um, so Math Space is part of the Equatio suite as well. But here, MathSpace just takes it that bit further as well. So not only did I make it visual with those counters, all of which can be moved about the page, you could drag and drop them. Um, in this example, the students just playing around with grouping using the freehand drawing tool, which is in MathSpace. And I think underestimate freehand drawing at your peril as a math teacher, that quick way of modeling and annotating something. Once you've worked out the groupings, you can start to think, oh, how would that work? And how would I do that? And being able to do it in that safe way where you can try and try and work something out. And if it doesn't work, try something else. But with no judgment, no final definite, you can't cross it out. Equatio Math Space sits there with the students so that they can keep going, keep trying, keep trying to make progress with their maths, whatever that progress looks like for them. So you can have confidence, hopefully, so far in everything that I've told you, but also in that we've got 10 million users of Equatio worldwide and 50 million for read and write. And I think when companies say this, yeah, it's a big, oh, amazing. But actually, I take this as think of how many students we are helping with this. Think of how many students around the world can now access things they couldn't previously access. And that's what we do here at TextHelp. Um, and that's what Equatio is out there to do. We work across all the platforms, as you would expect. Um, we've got Google, we've got Windows, we've got Apple, you name it, we work there, you've got it covered. We also work in LMS, so if you have an LMS, we work across those as well. But even if we don't technically integrate with something or we don't sit across something, because we've got that Google Chrome way of working in that Chrome extension, we can work anywhere where the students are working and give them access to maths in a whole new way. So why are we here? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's all down to me. Generally, most things that happen and go wrong are down to me. But um, in lockdown one, I was kicked out of my maths classroom as a maths teacher, and I was asked to teach GCSE maths online and quite tech savvy know all the things and there was just certain things that just can't happen in a maths classroom online I just couldn't do it I was like how how would that happen what would why would we do that um and I stumbled across um these two legends doing their math Mondays here on YouTube explaining about how Equatia helps and supports and you can see the product looks slightly different now as well but Honestly, an actual lifesaver in explaining to me how Equatio could help and how Equatio could create resources and support my students. Um, I the place where I was working, we were a tech help customer. So I mentioned to our manager that um, I felt that these two were the ant and deck 
of um, <laughs> Equatia, the Ant and Deck of Textile. Um, so I've mocked up Ant and Deck joining me on this webinar today in the little intros. Um, if you're not in the UK, Ant and Deck <laughs> um, are our flagship TV presenters. Um, they can work, Ryan and Luke can work out which one they are between the two of them. But here in the UK, Ant and Deck are our TV superstars any tv show these two present this tv show these tv shows so they are legends and i just thought it was a real fitting tribute to um say that these two are the legends of equatia because they truly are so like i say my name's sammy i'm just here to run the buttons today i'm going to dive into the chat now please do ask any questions thanks very much susan for chipping in visually show reducing ratios and fractions i've got so much in maths there susan you and i should talk um but i'm going to hand over to ryan now who's going to share with us his favorite bits um, of equatia thanks very much sammy and and i didn't really know how to take the anton deck re remark until you used use the word legends, in which case I'll, I'll take it as a positive. Uh, thank you. And uh, seeing as Louis um, is, is a lot taller than me, I think we can easily work, work out which one's on which one's tech. Um, so thanks very much, Sammy. And uh, whenever, you, whenever you first came to me and asked me um, to do this demo about my favorite Equatio feature, I really panicked. I was like, oh, oh no. I, I, I can't pick. I can't pick. There's too many things to pick from. I was ill. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. I was almost crippled by this this choice that I had to make. And uh, I, I've thought long and hard about it. And I think, well, think Ryan, think what is the best feature in Equatio? And it's not something tucked away. It's not something hidden. It's not something nobody ever sees. For me, the best feature in Equatio is quite simply our equation editor. Uh, and I'm going to explain why I think it's uh, the best feature uh, in Equatio today. So um, I've got my Equatio toolbar here in a Google document uh, on my second screen. And down here, we have our little equation editor mode button. And I think this is my favorite feature because no matter where you want to express your math, you had mentioned Sammy working on LMSs or in Google Chrome or Windows. No matter where you are, that equation editor is there to help you write and uh, express math the way you want to. Um, and I think that is fantastic. It's just such a consistent experience for students um, to have that toolbar available wherever they need it. So I want to show a couple of my favorite features on the equation editor. Um, first, my favorite feature is by far and away the, the prediction and the formulas in there. Uh, for anybody who's not aware of the prediction feature in Equatio, it's very simple. If you want to type a mathematical formula, you can just start typing the English phrase and it will show you the math representation of it. So if I type Q, Q, A, D, it will pop up and say quadratic formula. That's it. I don't need to remember how to type X or a fraction or a superscript or subscript. I just type Q, U, A, D and press enter. And magically, I have the full quadratic formula perfectly formatted that I can then insert into my Google document. Um, and that's just one example. As Sami and Louis probably know, quadratic formula is my go-to formula whenever I'm doing these demos. But we've actually got about 2,000, 2,500, I think, from my last count, formulas in Equatio. So if there's something there that you need to type, you can do that super quickly. Um, and just to show you how quick that is, I'm a pretty fast typer. So I like I work on the keyboard all day. I can type QUAD and press enter within the space of about one second. I wonder if I was putting this demo together, I thought to myself, I wonder how long it would take me to do that without the prediction feature or without our formulas. So I timed myself. I started a timer and I started typing X, looking around the keyboard to try to find the square root symbol and the it ended up taking me 33 seconds uh, to try and type the quadratic uh, equation. So that's 33 seconds by typing it out, or one second by typing in the formula and pressing enter. So with my very, very scientific calculations here, we can find out that equation was 33 times faster to enter in a piece of math, um, which for me is fantastic, super powerful, whether you're a student or a teacher, you want to express your math and you don't want the technology to get in your way and it really helps you out with that. So that was my first favorite part of the, of the equation editor. 
My second favorite part is just around how the equation editor interacts with all the other tools that are available in Equatio. So whenever Louis and I were originally building Equatio many, many years ago, and we, we really sat down and thought about the, the UX of Equatio, and we built Equatio from the ground up and um, looking at universal design for learning, which is very popular uh, in America and obviously popular in the UK as well. Uh, but essentially, universal design for learning boils down to allowing students to express themselves in whatever way they feel they, is easiest for them, not saying you have to use the keyboard or you have to use uh, your voice or you have to use a, a pen uh, and paper. But Equatio takes that equation editor and makes it available in all those different inputs. So, for example, if I wanted to type an equation, I could start off with the handwriting recognition. Uh, and I'm still using a mouse in this, so apologies for the, the bad handwriting, but it should pick it up OK. So I could type or write x squared plus 2. And I think to myself, you know what, at this point, I'm probably just quicker typing it into the, the equation editor than I am with my mouse. So I can flip over to the right-hand side where the equation editor is always there for me, and I can finish off typing that equation in the equation editor uh, to see. And I still have access to my, um, to my predictions and all that good stuff in there as well. And once that's in there, I think my thinking to myself, mm, maybe I could go and maybe try my hand on some LaTeX. Or if I want to learn LaTeX, I can flip back over to that mode. And you still have the equation editor there to help you out, but you can use LaTeX if that's your preference. Um, or you can go into the, the speech input and, write, and speak into your microphone and have the, the math in there as well. So having that equation editor there across all of those modes really helps students express themselves whatever way they are comfortable uh, in doing that. So that's my, that is my second favorite part of the, uh, of the equation editor. And my third favorite part of the equation editor is actually, I would imagine, probably the one of the underutilized um, parts. I wouldn't say it's hidden, but it's definitely underutilized. Um, so finding the quadratic equation in Equatio for me is pretty fast. I, I knew it was QUAD. There's already a formula for it in Equatio, and I know it's there, and I can press Enter. That's great. Um, but what... What if you're working on a problem that's not in the Equatio prediction data set? It's not part of that 2,500 formulas that we have. It's something you're, you're doing yourself. Maybe it was a question like Sammy had on the screen earlier on in math space. Um, you can actually create your own math in Equatio and add it into a favorites section. So if I wanted to type x plus Two equals five, and then I'm going to solve that. And so x equals. I shouldn't try and solve equations on a live demo either, by the way, because I am actually not amazingly good at maths, but equatio helps me out an awful lot. So we could do five minus two, and x equals three. Great. Okay. What if I wanted to maybe take out some steps here, and then use that as a math problem for my students? Um, but maybe I want to change some of the values every time. What I can do in this now is hit add to favorites. And I can call this mm, solve for x and hit add. Oh, I've already got one called solve for x. I've already been I've been in this scenario before. Um, let's just call this solve. And then clear my math. And once I add that to my favorites, I've actually got a database of favorites here in this more screen. So I can go into my favorites, and then I've got my previous solve for x and my new solve. And whenever I click on this, it adds that into the equation editor. And the great thing about this is it's like a little snippet. So whatever you store in there, you can keep adding into your equation editor. So uh, solve, uh, solve, and you can keep going and then add that math into your Google document. And there's lots of sort of cool things you could do with this as well. One of my other favorites is, I've called it colorful with a little smiley face. And that was a piece of math that I wrote with the quadratic equation 
and then change the colors on the different variables to highlight the different symbols, variables, and numbers within the quadra quadratic equation. Um, and lastly, just, on, just to finish off on that there, Equatio is a STEM tool. It's not just a math tool, but it's the, it, it encompasses you know, chemistry, physics, you name it. It can, do, it, it can represent math and chemical equations as well. And chemical equations, obviously, are something that might take you a long time to write, um, but might not necessarily be in Equatio's data set of predictions. So I did a quick Google earlier on for a kind of fun equation. Uh, and if you're making slime in your classroom, you can type the chemical formula for slime and store that in your uh, in your favorites box. And you will never have to type Na underscore two, B underscore four, O underscore seven, and so on and so forth ever again. You'll just have it there in your favorites. Maybe we can so, add slime to prediction, Ryan. That's probably a good idea, Louis. I assume people are using the chemical equation for slime quite a lot, so yeah. it would make sense to add it in there. Um, so those are those are my three favorite features encompassing the equation editor uh, in general. Um, and Sami, I'm not going to forgive you for the amount of stress you've caused me trying to trying to narrow down all my favorite features in the in equation to just one feature. Oh, that was so good, Ryan. Thank you so much. Um, Susan was um, just saying about UDL reaching the learning goals and having a LaTeX option as well. Wow, you blew her away um, as well as me. Um, but thanks for that, Ryan. I'm going to bring um, Louis's screen on now. There we go, Louis. Um, over to you. What's your favorite bit of equation? Yeah, so so a couple things I wanted to, I didn't want to interrupt Ryan, but one thing I thought was interesting and what Ryan was saying, I want to go back to that quadratic formula. Guys, remember, Ryan knows how to use Equatio, but think about all the students in the classroom. They're going to take much longer to do the quadratic formula in 33 seconds. And I'll give you a quick example, even though Ryan didn't touch on this. I know he probably thought about this. Do you know how many kids might struggle trying to put, for example, the square root sign only around B squared minus 4AC? So we know Ryan knows how to do that. It, and that's still, took me, it still took me pretty long, Louis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, Ryan knows how to do that, to be fair. And I don't think most students are going to. So you got it, you know, 33 times was Ryan's time. But when you think about students that are just beginning with digital math, the idea that we can just type in, and I, I, I don't want to steal Ryan, but prediction is one of my favorites too. So when Ryan was showing that, oftentimes Ryan, you know, said, hey, I timed myself. And what I sometimes do is, I count how many characters are in formulas and think to myself, do I want to type something 33 times or hit this keyboard 33 times to create, let's say, a formula that has 33 characters in it? Or what Ryan showed where he typed four characters to make the quadratic formula, right? So you can do the math, no pun intended. So Obviously here, um, some real good stuff that Ryan showed and my phone obviously is a dead giveaway for where I'm headed next. And I'm gonna show you all today, we'll take it off of there for just a second and I'm gonna move this phone. I have a really, really cool piece of software that kind of allows me to show you what's on my phone uh, for this demo. So I am going to head to Equatio Mobile, okay? So it, it, look, we just use this term, often underutilized. We could probably argue that Equatio Mobile is fairly underutilized. And I would say that in most demos, to be quite honest with everybody here, is when I demo the product in itself, it usually takes me around a good hour. I try and do these high level overviews, but oftentimes I have to fly over, over Equatio Mobile. It's just a really... Uh, it's a great product, but I would say it's a little bit more on the advanced side for a lot of our brand new math digital accessibility users. But I'll try and go real slow here, and I kind of have a full 10 minutes to kind of go over Equatio Mobile. So this should be somewhat fun. So a lot of times I demo Equatio Mobile on the Chrome browser, but because I have this fancy piece of software on my phone, I am going to go into my mobile browser and I can make my phone here just a tad bit bigger. So we'll bring this up. And in order to use Equatio Mobile, I'm gonna show you a couple things here and we are going to go to the website m.equat.io. Now, where did I get that? Where did that come from? So if you click on the Equatio Mobile button, 
you'll see over here the actual hyperlink. And obviously, if you're using iPads in your school or you're using a mobile device, students can just bookmark this, obviously, or let me slide my phone over. If I slide the phone over, you'll see we offer, we offer a QR code here too, which will help students get to the mobile website very quickly. So I'm going to go to m.equat.io, or I'm going to snap a picture of that QR code. Here I am clicking on my phone on my screen, which obviously is not going to work. Um, so I actually need to touch the go button on the phone. Um, and then you're going to see some sign-in options. So some of the things that we've added over time is additional sign-in options. Sammy went over a slide that talked about some of the, the, the text help family of products that we've incorporated. We have some different types of logins here, even for folks on the, uh, the Nordic side of uh, the UK there that allows us to kind of help out our friends in Norway, Sweden and Denmark, who are now part of the text help family uh, with some of those companies. So you can see there that we have that login if you need that. Uh, I'm going to back up, though, just a tad. And I'm gonna show you this with Google Chrome. So just type in or take a picture of m.equat.io. I'm gonna sign in with Google. I'm gonna use my uh, text help credentials or your Equatio credentials. And I'm gonna enter my password here. And hopefully on my screen here, of course, uh, two-factor authentication. Give me just a second. I just wanted you all to know that if this is your first time using Equatio Mobile, uh, you will be asked to authenticate. So just type in your credentials, type in that two-factor authentication, and let's hit next. Oops, wrong number. Uh, 730. All right, and this should take you to our Equatio mobile platform. So the newest feature here is the second option. And I can't wait to show this to you. It's actually been, uh, this has been in beta for quite a while. I'd say almost we're coming up to about a year where we've offered this. So I am gonna show you how to create a new document. And are you still seeing on my screen the two-step verification? Yeah? Yeah, we've got the two-step verification on yeah, the because I see the menu on my screen. So let me try and reconnect my device because it's working on my end. Oh, give me just a second, Sammy, and let me reconnect with Reflector. Yeah, thank you for posting that web uh, link in there. And let me try this one more time to get my phone to show for you. Sammy and I were just talking about this software. I jinxed it, didn't I? I've given you the never had a problem. Sammy Louis. So, all right, I think we're good now. Uh, there you go. Now we're good. Okay, so now you can see my Equatio mobile home screen, and I'm going to go to my active documents. Now, what it's finding here, for everyone that's never seen this or never used this before, it's checking to see where else does Louis have Equatio open and on the same network. So you need to be in the same network, you need to be in a document, have Equatio open, and it's able to find this active document. So what is the active document? Well, it's this document right here that you see that I have open. So anything that I create on my mobile device here, so let's say, for example, I want to scribble, and I am going to try and do not probably a whole lot better than what Ryan just showed. I'm running out of space. This is only an iPhone mini. OK. 2x squared minus 3y equals 8. I'm going to hit that little green check. You get two options here. And yeah, cool. Good, good comment, Susan. So I can now save this as math. What does that mean? Well, it can save the picture of the student's handwriting, or in this case, my handwriting, or we can convert this to math. So we have two options. We can save the image, which will take a picture of the handwriting, or we can save it as math. So we're gonna see if Equatio Mobile can understand Louis Scribble. So I'm gonna click save as math and look at that. It did a really good job. 2X squared minus 3Y equals eight. As soon as you hit this little blue circle button, I want you to watch. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to send this math into the active document. So again, if I'm going a little fast, 
Remember, the active document is the document here on my actual browser, okay, where I'm projecting the screen. So take a look, math successfully inserted. You're gonna see that little screen flicker. And now I can take math from my mobile phone, which you see on the screen, and send it over into a Google Doc. Now keep in mind, Equatio Mobile will insert wherever you are. So Sammy went over like, we work where you work. So if you want to send it into the LMS, you can do that. If you want to send it into a Google form, you can do that or wherever you are working, Word 365 and whatnot. I can also speak math. So I can turn on the recorder, hit the, hit the button. It's probably going to ask you to make sure that you have uh, accepted all your permissions. Okay. 2x squared minus 3y cubed equals 14. Hit the stop, okay? Now you're, gonna, now you're gonna say, hey, I'm ready, I'm done speaking my math. Hit the green circle, save it as math. So it's gonna take that spoken math, it's gonna turn it now into digital math. 2x squared minus 3y cubed equals 14. Hit that little blue button and it is going to send it. Whoop, I should have moved my cursor. Let me move my cursor now. You'll see that second insert right there. Okay, so now we've created math with our finger using handwriting, right? Because think about your mobile device, everybody. You can draw on it. You can speak inside it, right? It's got a microphone. Hopefully your mobile device can draw on it. You can speak to it. But what else can you also do with a mobile device? Probably what most of you use a mobile device for, which is taking pictures, right? So I can take, and I know this is challenging, but just understand this is a math document. It's probably blurry because I'm using a blur. You don't want to see my dog snoozing behind me. So I am going to now take a picture. Now you can see the document. Take a look at that. And provided the shadow does not interfere, watch this. I can snap a picture. I can now take my box and I can draw or drag, I should say, from the corner there, and I can take a snapshot of that in my math document. Now, remember guys, we talked about accessibility. What is this piece of paper with math on it? This is all inaccessible math. You have one way to pass out a printed document from the copy machine. We can take this document we can turn this problem into digital math. And then when we run it through Equatio Mobile, it's not only going to be digital math, it'll be accessible math. So let me demo this. By the way, don't be like me. Forget, I always forget to move my cursor. So make sure before you hit the, the send button on the math that you put your cursor in the document where you want to send it. So now we have 3W plus 5 is equal to 23 which by the way is exactly as it's printed on my paper. And I'm going to hit the blue button and you will see that math now fire in. So now I have shown you all three ways to use Equatio Mobile in sending math into a digital document like a, uh, a, a Google Doc for this example, okay? Now I'm gonna show you one last thing and then we're gonna throw it back to Sammy to go over some of the things we've been working on. I want you to take a look at my screen here. You'll see on my mobile phone that we have the option to create a new document. Now, this has always worked very, very well for me. So we will put Equatio Mobile to the test uh, right with our chief technical officer on the horn so he can see this himself and Watch the magic here. I'll tell you what, let's use some more challenging math. How about something that I currently can't solve? Calculus, okay? So we'll let Sammy demo this and actually solve these. So take a look at this document here with some very complex higher education type math. And I am gonna take a photo, hold my finger really still, and I am gonna see now, Sammy mentioned magic in the chat. This, in my opinion, is the real magic, guys. I'm going to take an image of all 18 of these problems, okay? We're going to hit this little green check or green uh, circle with the white check. And what do I want to do? I want to perform a scan of this document 
or do I want to save the image? This would be a way for a teacher or an instructor to just take the image and throw it into whatever the students might be collaborating on. I would prefer you, and I think Ryan would prefer you to try out the scan document feature because this then makes the math accessible. So watch how great this is. I'm gonna scan this document and look at what we have there. And just by my new glasses here, we'll test my vision. Uh, that looks almost, I don't, I don't wanna say almost, it's spot on. I don't see a single error at first glance here. Now, what's awesome about this guys is watch. When I have scanned all 18 of these problems, I am going to be given the opportunity and hey, let's do another one really quick. This will be a little bit more simpler math. Let's add another document. Okay, you wanna give the students a little more work, about seven two-step equations. I'll do this one a little bit faster because you've already seen me do this very slow. And I'm gonna do, I don't know what happened to number, oh, I guess there's a little space on the paper. A little shadow there, not to worry. By the way, Sammy, I'm not checking the chat, but if someone asks, hey, Louie, what about the directions at the top of that worksheet? Yes, it can bring in the text as well. So just in case someone is curious, if there's directions at the top of the page, now look at that, guys, all seven problems. And I know it's probably hard for you to see, but I also do not see any errors. Let me give it in a quick spot check. But if there is an error, sometimes I like it to make an error, Ryan, I'll show you why. So watch this. I can now send this and say, I'm done. I'm done scanning. I've got two documents. Let's give this a name. I'm a mean teacher. Let's give every one of these problems for homework and hit done and watch what our option is. Now we've been working on this for a little while now and what we are enabling our users and our customers to do is scan a document and send that into a mass space. We would love to snap our fingers and give you more opportunities to send it into more places. And hopefully we can look into that as we continue to work together as a team to be able to send more of this content into places other than just MassSpace. But I do love, love, love MassSpace. And that's the first piece of work where we decided to send this. Because now you're probably wondering, hey, Louie, you took pictures of all that math on your mobile phone. You sent it somewhere. And now the documentation says the MassSpace has been created. You can now share it. Okay, so where is all that math? Well, in case you didn't know, let me show this actually, because sometimes I forget to do this. We don't need my phone anymore. So let's close this. Um, give me just a second. Let's stop showing my phone. Let's close this. In case you didn't know, and actually I think Sammy's gonna show this, you can get into MassSpace right from the Chrome extension, okay? So I'm gonna go over to MassSpace, which is where my mobile phone told me that this worked and look at this right here. This is actually the magic, check it out. I can open mass space and we'll give this just a second. And I know what some of you may be thinking but you may or may not have put it into the comments. Guys, look at what each of these are. These are individual problems. This is not one image. These are all individual problems, which now, what does that allow me to do as a student? It allows me to click on the image, hit edit math, and bring that math right into our, Ryan's favorite, our equation editor, right? And now we can what? Start solving and showing our work, okay? The other thing you can do is play that math out loud for students that need to hear it. 11 period of sum from k equals one to infinity of two ln k over k. Not sure how loud that's coming through, but you can just click on each piece of math and hit the play button and now this is accessible math. It allows us to interact with each of these. Oh yeah, the two-step equations that I pulled in, look at this, I can I, these I can solve. So look, I can take this number three here and I can hit edit math, pull this right in and start to show my work, right? So oop, prediction, I can say, I'm gonna subtract five from both sides of the equation Okay, and then I get 3w is equal to, let's say 18. Use my little keyboard shortcut. I thought Ryan was gonna show some of these really cool keyboard shortcuts, that's okay. Control shift enter, we didn't have time, Ryan, I get it. 
So we got some really good keyboard shortcuts and check this out. We got W is equal to six. We got our alignment buttons up here in the equation editor. We can solve this. And now you've got an option here, guys. Do I want to replace this problem with the work? Because now I'm the student, right? The teacher sent this to me and now I am solving this. So I can either do that or I can just insert this and then I can resize this and put this right in where it goes. So let's collapse that and we need to make this just a bit smaller. So now my student has answered the question, shown their work. So that is Equatio Mobile, guys, from, from some of these really complex higher education type math problems to one-step equations to um, vertical operations for elementary school. Equatio Mobile really is, it provides another UDL approach to solving math. So um, anyhow, that's it for me. Sammy, I'm going to give this back to you. Uh, I'm yeah. here need to talk about any of the things that we've worked on over the summer. So I'll leave my mic on. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Well, I'm just, oh, I removed Louie, not the screen. There we go. We're, we're, removed you there Louie. Okay. Um, I'm just very quickly going to bring my screen on if I can work out which button um, and I just wanted to share my favorite thing which is I did have predictions and then I did have mobile and so I've been sat here like rapidly trying to get ready of what I could say <laughs> um, but I think um, mine has to be Google Forms um, and I think Equatia works so well in Google Forms anyway um, just here when you have the Chrome extension installed you can get to the equation editor with the predictions that Ryan talked about and you can pop in your um, equatio maths as questions or as answers and even if you leave in a google form as a short answer text response um and you insert answers using equatio google forms will recognize it and grade it and mark it correctly and i think that's just such a cool thing and such a huge lifesaver for teachers um it really does make the difference but i have an actual google form that i use um and this one here, I wrote a question about fence being sold in lengths. Um, each fence length costs, how much does it cost to put a fence around the whole field? And traditionally, what a student might do is they might just pop an answer into the question. So they might just put their answer in. As a teacher, I don't know where they got that answer from. I am completely clueless as to where that came from. They might present me with a piece of paper in a week's time when they come into class with how they worked it out, but I can't see it or visualize it. But by the students using um, Equatio and clicking on the math space icon, so they would have the um, Equatio extension turned on and click insert math space, they're able to show me their answers. So this is what I see as a teacher. I can see this student has given me their answer, but I don't know where it came from. This student here, they've given me a really detailed breakdown. They've actually sketched it out and I can see where they went wrong because the question mentioned um, a square field and they've done a rectangle. So I can diagnose that error and I can say, no, no, you didn't get it right, but you got so much of it right. Everything was right apart from just that bit there. This one, they've just made an attempt and I can say in an exam, you would get this mark and you can carry on and you can, how could you expand your answer and carry on with your thinking? This one here, they've slightly gone off track and again it's a rectangle so I'm more informed as a teacher so by offering students UDL principles of multiple means of expression with maths as a teacher I'm able to offer more bespoke support and help diagnose those errors and those misconceptions that students face and um, so yeah math space and google forms generally I, I think we could class it as one it's just google forms as a whole i'm not cheating by saying two things but i think we could just say it's the one and um, but yeah louis we wanted to talk a little bit about our roles um here at um text help and i call this section you said we did um and right if you want to have a think about um what you might want to say on this as well but um my role is to help teachers see the benefit of Equatio and see how Equatio would live in the classroom. But my role is also to be incredibly nosy, get my foot in every door going at Text Help, harass the chief technical officer to come join me on YouTube for webinars, harass the product manager of Equatio um, that he makes changes to the product to my demands. But I think 
that's because that's the text help culture. The text help culture is to make changes for the better, to be proactive, to get out there and to find better ways of doing things and to connect and collaborate with our global colleagues. Um, we've got over 350 on the team at Text Help now. So we're a huge global family trying to make the best products we can to help students. Um, and so I just wondered, Ryan, what are your thoughts about how um, the challenges of a company to react to what customers say and customers feedback, but how important is it to us as a company that we hear from users about how we can best serve them with the products? Oh, absolutely! It's it's absolutely critical um, for our, for the development of the software. Um, Equatio is um, developed using agile methodologies, so that means essentially that every three to four weeks we do some form of release to Equatio, whether that's you know adding new feature or whether it's uh, maybe tweaking one of the integrations that we have or or something along those lines. But every three to four weeks, Louis goes through all the feedback. That he receives, and I'm sure Sammy, you do the same, um, and picking out the bits of feedback that we can react to and feed back into the development process. So every month, something from that feedback loop gets made its way into our products, uh, and that's where that's where I come in as well. You know, making sure that we've got enough people and our our team of Equatio developers and, and testers and designers and everybody who's involved in the uh, in building out the Equatio products making sure we've got enough people to, to take that feedback and, and make it into, into reality. But nothing in the nothing in the equation product gets done without that feedback. It's it's so vitally important. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, it, it, it really does help shape the conversations that we have. And Louis, you and I chat all the time <laughs> about about because the, because we are, you know, geographically very different locations serving very different student needs, but ultimately what's at the core is we just want to make the best product to best support students don't we louie yeah absolutely and like ryan said you know one of the things that uh i'm not sure if anyone's going to share screen here in the remainder of this but there is a send feedback button right in the product so uh, if you click the little blue box from the menu uh, there's a place for you to input feedback uh, keep in mind we did try and tailor this to where this is where you have product related feedback in other words Hey, Louis, you know, I could really use this manipulative in mass space or, hey, Louis, is there a way we can, you know, uh, add some things into prediction? Ryan mentioned earlier about adding formulas in one of the and I don't get to talk to Ryan nearly as much as I'd like to. But, Ryan, I have not received a feedback for adding a formula in months. So we've obviously done a really good job because we've got, we've got we've got all the formulas in the world. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we have them all, Ryan. You said there's 2,500, but guys, if you do come across formulas that need to go in, this is the way to get a hold of us, right? So this is the way to contact myself. Then I work with development and say to our developers, "Hey, at the end of this three or four week sprint, do you have a couple minutes to add in?" this formula by this geometry teacher or by this statistics teacher. Uh, they really love their students to be able to create, you know, either this matrix easily or be able to create, um, you know, like Ryan was showing how he was favoriting things. Um, so if you need anything, please do reach out. I mean, Ryan said it best, so there's no sense in me trying to reword it. I mean, we, we take feedback seriously. We do kind of, you know, we evaluate from a priority standpoint. I want to make sure I, I, I emphasize when Sammy said we have 350, that's in the company, not on the tech stuff <laughs> developer team. So we have a relatively small team, but a very, very dedicated team. Uh, and I'm thrilled to tell you, there hasn't been a change to our team in, in months, years. So we have the same crew. Uh, we all love working here. We all love what we're doing for our customers and for our company. And, um, and you know, we know we're making a, a difference and it may be a small difference. It might be a large difference. Doesn't matter if it makes a difference for you and it makes a difference for your students and it's something we can do, then we're happy to look at trying to put that work into one of those agile sprints that Ryan mentioned. So please, please, the feedback's actually been pretty quiet, Ryan. So uh, I'm glad we're getting a chance to talk about this because we have some, some things that we're gonna be looking at here in the next few weeks, uh, kind of direction wise, where we wanna go with Equatio in the upcoming year. and. Certainly, if you have feedback and product-related feedback, we'd love to hear from you all. So, 
Yeah, and I think what's always nice is we've talked about, but let's show some examples of what we've we've yeah. we've done recently. I say we, it's really not me. Um, I'm just here running the buttons, but <laughs> literally, there's been such a wealth of things. And I will just apologize, my little monkeys are just returning from school. It's that time of day. Um, there's been such a wealth of things put into Equatio recently, Louis, and these all came from customer feedback. That's right. Uh, customer feedback and employee feedback, Sammy, yourself. <laughs> uh, so yes, rectangular prisms have been missing in mass space for quite a while. Um, we also had a request come in for a digital clock and we put a toggle in there. So we, we identified what do we want that clock to look like? And does that clock need to be able to have our teachers make adjustments to that clock? And if they do, then we want to put it under smart shapes, not shapes. So the digital clock is brand new. You can actually click on smart shapes, find the new digital clock. And depending on where you live geographically, you might use a uh, 12 hour view or you might use the 24 hour view. We give you opportunities to toggle that. So it works in that geographic location for your students. Um, I don't have to tell anyone this. Doesn't matter if you're a math person or not. I have a fourth grader now at home and he is just learning about adding and subtracting fractions and doing some of those things. So he might be sitting at dad's desk here very shortly to check out these new fraction tiles that we just added in because we've been asked uh, for this for several months now. Uh, and one of our developers is able to get some fraction tiles in there. In fact, someone had said, not only do I want the fraction tiles to be able to be pulled apart, can we change the colors on them? You know, so we've added in some functionality there that I think our customers will love. Even something as small as um, a number square. You know, someone said, hey, we, we want, uh, you know, we're working with really primary students, you know, kinder, first grade, uh, and we want a number square, one through 100. And that way that, that those can all be interacted with. So some really good stuff there that we've added. Um, I think uh, Sammy's got a, um, a text help colleague that went down to South Africa recently and they asked for some South African currency. Um, but, hey, I learned something new. I love learning something new. Apparently it's called the Rand. I think I'm saying that right. And we added in the six coins for South Africa. So bar models apparently are something that's very commonly used to help teach certain items, especially in the UK. I didn't typically see them as a math instructor here in the United States, but bar models are apparently are used and they're basically are what we might call curly brackets, but these are horizontal bar models versus vertical. So typically we would use vertical curly brackets. Uh, Sammy had said, hey, those bar models would be great if we could get those to turn horizontally. Um, that would really help some of our teachers. So we added those in. So these mass space items were all added in recently. And we have a back to school blog that's going to be published hopefully at the end of the week. That's going to talk about the use cases for these and kind of that, hey, you said we listened and we did the work that, that our customers are asking for. So. Sammy, there was a question you popped up and I, I missed it. Can you read? Oh, it? it was just a bit of praise from Susan. She's been an absolute trooper throughout the session today, but she's been saying it makes much oh. more cognitively, cognitively accessible, not just accessible. And I think that's what we do here at Text Help. We say accessibility and we're really not talking specific learning difficulty in maths. We're talking accessibility for everyone, whatever it is that's going to help you with your maths, your literacy, whatever it is, we will try and make the product help you the best we can um you know taking on the feedback from the uk about the bar models and the bar models we didn't realize were going to be so popular in south africa as well and they were so popular then we we're like okay great we need to really bump okay. these up and it was just a, a simple thing to make the notation and they sit with the fraction bars as well but um yeah just really responsive and agile that's the word not responsive yeah. agile as ryan said yeah. um, so if anyone's got i don't think we've missed any questions in the chat so i'm gonna um take a wrap on this now um it's just to say a big thank you to ryan and to louis taking time out of the day to join me today on this little crazy idea that i had that we should all get together and say our favorite things about equatio <laughs> Well, thank, thank you, Sammy, for having us both on. It was uh, it was great to, to finally get to demo Equatio again, uh, and also to share the screen with yourself and your your enthusiasm for uh, for Equatio too, which is great. Oh, yeah, nice. absolutely, Sammy. I echo that. I mean, I, I I'd known Sammy for quite a while and knew she was a uh, an avid Equatio user prior to joining, and and Ryan and I couldn't be more thankful to have her on board as being kind of a 
uh, a specialist there in the UK. Um, I can't I can't be everywhere, and I'm located in the United States, so uh, I finally get to head that way in a few weeks, which I'm excited about. Get to finally meet Ryan. I've I've known Ryan for three years, never shaken the man's hand. So I uh, look forward to meeting some of my colleagues there at Text Help, and uh, uh, certainly, hopefully, uh, meeting other Text Helpers that are you know anxious to provide some feedback to me since I'll finally be there in person. So. Um, but obviously, guys, we, we are we are here for to help you and to help everyone be understood like the back of Sammy shirt. Um, so please, please feel free to reach out to us and we will see if we can't, uh, you know, help you uh, continuing into this new school year. So uh, you guys are all doing great work. Sammy and I are former educators and, and Ryan's got family educators in his family. So we all know the challenges that everyone's been through the last few years. Hopefully everyone's back to a little bit of somewhat normal. Um, but you know, we're here to help and support you. So if you need anything, just please don't hesitate to reach out. Amazing. Thanks, Louis. What a wonderful yeah. way to close it. Just pop in the contact details on there again. If anyone does have any questions, you've got my email and you've got my Twitter handle. But thanks very much for joining us today. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye bye.